OSG, Napoleon's Last Gamble, Quattro Bra scenario. Uh, may need to learn, so we're back. Um, it is now moving into the 6 p.m. turn. <coughs> the French have Quattro Bra, uh, doing better than historical. <coughs> the question is, can they hold on to it? Uh, last turn. Coalition attempted an attack here. They were repulsed. Uh, they did force Ney off of here with their artillery. So again, the French um, st st uh, strong reinforcements coming down the road. So the French need to they need to create a buffer here um, from Quatre Bras. Uh, going to be some fighting in the woods, probably. And they may take a shot up here to try and uh, move this flank back, too, before these <coughs> two new divisions here um, can have an effect. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're in the command phase. Jump down to the command segment. Um, Ney activates Riley. All of Riley's troops are within three. Ney also reaches out and activates third <coughs> cavalry corps here. So the only thing we have to worry about is <coughs> Kellerman and whether he can activate and then activate this unit. Um, yeah, we'll just let it ride on Kellerman. All right, all the French are activated. So what will they do? Well, I did look at this for a while. Um, I'm going to try a bold move. All the coalition artillery is here. By moving adjacent, it prevents them from bombarding. And then maybe move this guy here. And if I get lucky on the attack and make them retreat, I can uh, get on both sides of Picton and see if that works out. And I'm going to also go for combined arms attack. Bring the artillery up. So, just question. <coughs> Who do we want on the far flank? And I'm <coughs> going to use my uh, leader units this time. So Ney's going to be supporting one attack and Riley the other. Uh, since Ney only has a command rating of one, he only has to stay within four of Riley. Uh, so if Ney's here, I think that's possible. So question is who to put on the flank here and then do the advance. Should it be the strong infantry or should the infantry stay in the center and let the cavalry do it? Um, anyway, okay, let's see what we're going to do here. I do know this unit is going to move here. Um, I'm going to put a leader here, so my stacking will be five. And this unit will swing around and join here. And then one of the artillery, one, two, three, four. Actually, I've been messing up. It's, it does cost one to stack, so. But he can still make it one, two, three, four. So that gives me 18 to 10. It would be nice to get two more factors, but we'll see. Um, let me rearrange this to make it look more exciting. Oh, that's the best I can do there. So I'll figure out in a second which leader goes there. Um, Well, since this guy activated, he can do stuff. Uh, let's see. So I'm still deciding 
where uh, I'm going to do this. Okay, this guy can go one, two, three. Well, there's even the order of movement, so I don't have to pay the stacking cost. He's going to go here. He's going to go here. And with a leader, I can put everybody here. Now, uh, what's the advantage of putting this cavalry unit here? Nothing. Because the goal is to advance here, but it does protect the flank. Oh. Let's put him here. Let's send Ney here. And send Riley here. <coughs> now I have two artillery units. I'm probably not going to use them to bombard. Um, I could bombard this hex. I could bring up this guy. And they could all move up here, and I'd get four bombardment against Picton. Um, but then if I prematurely make him retreat before surrounding him... So, let's see what I got here. Uh, let's see, 9, 10, 13. 13 to 6, that's 2 to 1. Um, there's no reason to add any artillery there. And then... Uh, 18 to 10. I need two more points. Hmm. Actually, I can move both artillery up here. Or I could use them over here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I need another leader. Uh, so the problem is here, I would like to attack him and force him out of the woods, but this unit has to be addressed, and I need both these units here, so I could use the artillery here, or I could increase the odds here. Wow. Um, one... Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I got to get to eight, and that's eight. If I move this guy here, then he has to attack him. Or I could move him here. Um, but he's halved to. But the artillery's halved two in the woods. So. Okay, this could backfire, but here we go. Um, this guy is going to move one, two, three, four. Um, this guy is going to move one, two, three, four. Uh, he will soak off against him. This guy is going to move here. So, now we've got the last... Uh, artillery unit here. I'm tempted to put him here. One, two. He could go here. Not that it would make any difference. Hmm. What do I gain by putting him here? He can't get all the way around here to soak off this guy. Uh, I could put him here, but then he'd be all alone. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to put Kellerman here. Question is, all right. Well, let's put this guy here, and then Kellerman. One, two, six. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm doing that right, and then this guy goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. Full court press. Um, I believe I did that legally, so I'm going to break the move here. Big turn for the French. Order of attack is important. Um, <coughs> uh, best I'm going to do here is a 2 to 1. Artillery is halved. Um, 
Defenders in clear. Well, I'll take a one to two with both artillery units, then two to one here, and then two to one there. That's uh, how this area here will play out. So this attack has to go first while he's surrounded. <laughs> so it's, um, I'm going to do that attack. Yeah, two to one here first on this guy. That will open the attack. Uh, first off, any artillery fire bombardment. Um, well, this guy could bombard here. But there's counter battery fire. We've got three. I think you round down, though. So that's one. I'm going to have to check the rules for that. I'm pretty sure. Counter battery. Yeah, there it is. Counter battery. Four SP if it's target included. Three SP. So yeah, it's got to be rounded. By one half, rounding down. So that effectively makes this a one bombardment. That would be interesting if that broke up the attack. <laughs> <coughs> um, five or six. No, I'm Malik, I'll roll it, and that'll be the end of the French attack. Three, no. <coughs> All right, so they stay. So now we will come down here. Down here, do our two to one. <coughs> Yep, infantry versus infantry. So this is the result we want first. Two to one on one. DR2. That is an awesome result. Um, and then we got to roll for the leader. All right, this is uh, big for the French. Teaming combat unit may cross, enter an EZOC or X occupied by combat units. Friendly units do not negate EZOCs for person for per, uh, purposes of combat. A leader may retreat through an enemy zone of control if occupied by a friendly unit. So, but then the other rule that applies here is it's not, it's a waiting recovery um, is the situation. We scroll down here. If a unit cannot fully retreat, it is eliminated if any part of its three paths is blocked by his ox or the map edge. If the unit is placed in the unit's awaiting recovery, and it can do that. And then we have to look <coughs> at the leader. I think that was here. Leaders in combat. <coughs> retreat and captures. Leader stacked for friendly combat units can always retreat the enemy. Every leader in a retreating stack is subject to separate die roll. A leader alone is subject to capture when adjacent to an enemy. Or whenever he is a target of a environment that reduces a result. <coughs> so it looks like um, a leader alone is subject to capture. And replacement officer. Leaders stacked with friendly combat units can always retreat. Actually, I think the unit is destroyed. So let me figure out where that. Yep, I found it. I'm going to have to calculate this casually, right? So, wow, that unit is gone. And I would say that Brunswick is going to be replaced two turns here. Ah, the question is, do they want to advance after combat? No, they do not want to. They just want to stay right there. So now we've got to do this attack. Um, artillery not attacking into woods, but in the clear. So I think that means that... Let's see that. Terrain effects for uh, combat. Movement, combat, uh, woods hex, cavalry attack or defense, Jason combat. 
but the defending hex is not woods. So I would say they get their full effect. And if we go to the uh, combat results table, got to come up with better names for these tables that keep fooling me. Um, wow, that's interesting. What are the odds? So we have two artillery attacking three in the clear. Um, it is not one to one, but it is not one to two. So I think it's this one right here. One to one point five. So let's roll that. Two. They're rolling well. Um, DR Asterk. Wow. The artillery unit forces these guys to retreat. Um, they'll retreat there. And again, not coming out of the woods. Then we have a straight two to one. Now, apparently, if I read this right, cavalry in the woods. Their attack and defense is halved, so that should be a one-to-one, -one, I believe. Yeah, let me look at that. Nope, I'm glad I clarified that. Wood hex, total strength of all cavalry and artillery attacking into or defending in is half, so it doesn't count for attacking out to clear. So that will be a two to one attack. Um, there is a potential for an AR or a shock, and we have the advantage all across the board, apparently. But this cavalry is faster than that cavalry, so they can opt to retreat before combat. So Actually, this was the French strategy, clear the woods. And they have cleared the woods. That's probably how they're going to anchor their left flank. Um, and they're also getting the distance here with Quatre Bras. Now it's time for this attack. And I believe this one will go first. And if they get lucky and force a retreat, then the advanced after combat will surround Picton. Um, wow, that could maybe be the end of the game here. So I think I've done this right. These two are attacking here. And we've got one, five, and five is ten, is fourteen to six. Okay, that's a two to one. But I have cavalry and artillery. So that should be a three to one. Yep, let's check this again. Yeah, 9, 10, 14 to 6 is 2 to 1. Combined arms is 3 to 1. All right. Let's see if they succeed. They're rolling well now. Uh, not now. So what? DR. That's all it means. That's all it takes. Just a DR. Um, they can retreat here or here. Wow, that's a tough choice here. Uh, this is not good for the coalition. I'm trying to figure out the advantage if they retreat here or here. They're both town hexes. Um, but I think they'll retreat here to prevent the cavalry from sweeping around. Advance after combat is nay. He takes <coughs> everyone with him, and now Picton is surrounded. And the combat odds here are, and we've got uh, combined arms. This is in the way again. And we got four, five, um, four, six, ten, eighteen, twenty. And that's a three to one again with combined arms. Let me make sure he's not sitting in a. Nope, that would have been a shocker. Should have been here, not there. All right, here we go. Three to one on a two. Oh my gosh. DR2. This is a disaster. Um, I'm going to say this guy's flip, and he's here. And these two units 
they can retreat, so they are this. But, wow, and these units definitely are not going to advance. So, um, wow, big turn for the French. Um, I do not see, with that loss, how they're going to win. Um, they've got to protect their supply lines here. They aren't going to get big reinforcements. Uh, they may, but they've taken too many losses. Um, it's going to be really hard to get back here. The French do now have a solid line. They can't be surrounded. Um, and there's nobody really over here who can swing around with the marsh. And we've got the cavalry screening here. Uh, next turn for command. Uh, yeah, Ney will activate Riley, and Ney will activate here. And we'll roll for Kellerman. But Riley will be able to activate all his units, and Kellerman will just see. Um, well, there is now three units with Kellerman, so if Kellerman doesn't activate, two of them won't activate. So we need to decide which, and we've got some artillery here. All right, let's move the move markers, and yeah, this was kind of a stunning turn here. Uh, the French pulled off. Uh, especially here with Picton, but Brunswick went too. Um, so how is how are they going to respond? Uh, best they can do is just try and defend. All right, that was an interesting turn. Uh, we're at 21 minutes, so I will stop recording here, and we will return uh, with the coalition in Wellington, trying to pick up the pieces. Thanks for listening. <laughs>